the field house floor for a special presentation. Many of you have noticed the special t-shirts being worn this evening by our basketball teams, cheerleaders, students, and fans. Tonight is a special night to raise money for Archie's Promise. Our head coach for the Trojans, Daniel Cox, and his wife, Westwood Principal Kelly Cox, wrote a little what you know more about why Archie's Promise Foundation is so important. For those of you who do not know about Archie's promise, let us introduce you to our son, Archie Alexander Cox, born April 16, 2021. Archie weighed four pounds, 12 ounces, and was 17 and a half inches long. He had the sweetest features, but his head full of dark hair stole the show with all who met him. We were able to spend four precious days together that forever changed our world and our hearts. We have promised to always honor our brave little boy by sharing his story. Our mission through Archie's Promise is to offer support to families who experience a devastating infant loss. Through your donations, we will be able to provide financial support for its specific funeral expenses and also partner with local community organizations to assist families during this difficult time. We thank you for the outpouring of love and financial support that we have received in establishing the Archie's Promise Donor Advised Fund near the Henry County Community Foundation. Our partnership will forever impact those who experience the hardest we now know. And now at this time, Newcastle Student Government Officers would like to present Daniel and Kelly with a check of their fundraising efforts so far this school year. They have raised a total of seven thousand and seventy dollars Tonight, you will have the opportunity to help raise even more. Between the first and second quarters, students will be going around the buckets. Remember that every penny counts. They will also have cards with a menu of QR code as well. And remember that you are making a difference. Lastly, they are set up on the east. 
Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the largest basketball arena, high school-wise, in the world. I'm Jonathan Mathis alongside Jim Leisure, and it's Newcastle and New Palestine, both with one loss on the air, both very promising beginnings of the season. A little Christmas present for you this evening here on a nice Friday night. Jim, what's in that stocking for these two teams? Well, one of the things, Jonathan, that to look for tonight is there's actually some height on the floor. Newcastle has three guys over 6'3". Uh, sometimes it seems like we call games. Uh, there's one right there, Gavin Welch. Averages 14 and basically 14 and a half points, 2.5 assists. But we see a lot of games that are played by guys 6'1", 6'2". Tonight there's gonna, there could be some post presence. Going to be some great shooting, some boards uh, uh, for Newcastle. Dawson Scott gets about eight rebounds a game, four of them on the offensive end per game now. That means second chance points for him. Two pretty evenly matched teams should be a good ball game. It seems like both of these teams coming off of games that were a little offensively frustrating. They, New, New Powell played Greenfield Central, who played a zone. Newcastle played Jay County, who played a zone. And now the shackles are off a little bit. Let them fly, don't you think? Absolutely. And, you know, again, I, I, if I had to give a slight advantage to either side in terms of, you know, who, who shoots the long ball better, Newcastle shoots 38% from behind the, the arc. Now, New Palestine at 27, I think as a coach, you always want to be somewhere in the 30s if you can from three-point land. So Newcastle with a slight advantage from the outside. So with New Pal, you're looking at Steele Brassfield, who has been outstanding this year, and he's going to need to be outstanding tonight because one of his main running mates, Blaine Nunnally, is out this evening. Yeah, again, uh, I guess you can. it's still possible to get just regular sick you know, in yeah. the world today. <laughs> and, and apparently Blaine has been regular sick and is not going to be here. Luckily for New Palestine, you know, normally when you lose a player like Blaine Nunnally, you know, you're at a huge disadvantage. But luckily for the Dragons, they've got another Nunnally, and he looks just like Blaine. It's his twin brother, Bryant, and I think Bryant's going to try to step in and fill some of that void. What's that conversation like when you're Trent Whitaker and you're going up to a player who you label your defensive specialist, and you're like, all right, Bryant, uh, you already know this, your brother's sick, but we need you to pick up a bigger offensive load tonight. Yeah, I had plenty of opportunities down through the years. I think it is important to have a conversation. You don't just throw the kid in the ballgame and say, go go be Blaine, because he can't be Blaine. Blaine's Blaine and Bryant's Bryant. And, you know, but I, what we need tonight is a little bit more of an offensive focus for you. Still need you on the defensive side, but we need you to distribute the basketball. We need you to lead the team. That's what Blaine Nunnally does. He, he's the quarterback of this basketball team. Tonight it's Brian's turn. If you look at Newcastle, 5-1, and one, best start in a long time. This is 2017, 2018, and so far they've been able to do with balance offensively. Four different leading scorers over the last four games. That gives a whole different mindset for this team. If nobody wants to take the, the prideful stand of I'm the leading scorer, but they're celebrating everybody to to raise up this Trojan ball club. And it also just puts a lot of pressure on the other team defensively. Like you said, Newcastle has four young men that average right at you know 10 points or more a game. Caleb grows at 9.0. I call that 10. And so they got four. <laughs> he does too. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, they, they've got four opportunities. You can't just focus on one guy. You know, the old boxing one where you just basically take one kid out of it, assign one, a player to, like, face guard him, so to speak, and run it. Well, you can't do that to Newcastle because they got four kids that can fill it. New Palestine, on the other hand, has three. Steel Brassfield is clearly their best player. Everybody knows that. 18 and a half points. But, again, uh, you know, they've got other guys on the team. Ian Stevens averages 11.8, so other guys can score as well. A Hoosier Heritage big matchup early in the season. Newcastle number one, New Pal number two. Let's toss it up, Jim, and see some high school basketball. That ferocious tim tip is won by New Pal. Steel Brassfeld. What a season he's had. He's going to Indiana Tech next year. Going to be a warrior up there. And he's going to look for many opportunities. Leading point scorer, leading rebounder. That's Ian Stevens inside. Joining them in the starting lineups, Bryant Nunnally, whom we talked about as our first steal of the game's underway. Ian Routabush and Logan Strong are the five for New Pal. Newcastle's opening possession. That's Sam Maddy at the point. Caleb Groh, Trey Miller, Gavin Welsh, and Dawson Scott are the five for the Trojans. This is Welsh. Trying to find his way through the lane, but he got a little too happy with the feet, Jim. That's a travel. 
Uh, he was pretty determined there. You're going to see probably again on the replay there where he tries to dribble between a couple defenders and then step through the third, and it did not end well for him. So two possessions, two turnovers, obviously not what either coach wants. Both teams right now in man-to-man defense. So big difference from what these teams have faced last time on the floor. We'll see how New Pal negotiates, negotiates this possession. That's Routabush, not much of an offensive threat, at least not yet. Trying so is Nunnally, and Bryant Nunnally left it short. Welsh around the bend. Maddie pops up a three, left it long. The tip out, snared by Strong. Stevens on the mark, and it's 3 nothing Dragons. Stevens is a really, really nice player, just a junior, and I just, I just see that kid getting better and better, and by the end of his senior year, I mean, we, I don't know what level of basketball he could play, but he's definitely a college basketball player. Open from the corner, down and out was Trey Miller, who's a phenomenal three-point shooter. How about now? Left that one short. 0 for 2 on that stretch, but he's a 40% three-point shooter on the season. Jim? Brassfeld couldn't get the quite touch, and Miller leaking way out. Here he is. Miller tried just to lay it over the front of the rim, and he got lucky as it kind of rattled home. I still... If I live to be 100, and I plan to, <laughs> I don't know why nobody uses the glass anymore. Hey, that's a, that's a major question. My fiance <laughs> raves about the use of the backboard, and we'll see inside. Stevens does use the backboard, but not enough of it, and a first foul of the game is called. I think that's going to go against Logan Strong there. Now, Logan has already made his presence felt here tonight. He's gotten a couple big defensive rebounds, but as we watch the replay here, I don't know why you just don't use the glass. You do that little finger roll thing. And uh, he's really lucky that he got the home bounce. He did 3-2. Two and a half minutes into this, this one, Matty. And here's some full court pressure from New Pal. Matty weaving his way through down the lane and blocked by the underside of the backboard. Brassfield bullets it up to Stevens, and it's 5-2. to two. Well, the way to beat the press is to keep the ball in the middle of the court. Matty did that, and then again, he just kind of Drove the lane, had an opportunity to kick it out, chose to go to the rim, and it didn't end well. Ooh, a little trouble here. Grow. That one was deflected. Miller thought about the three, backs out. Here's Gavin Welsh. He saw his stats in the pregame. Leading scorer for Newcastle at 14.3 per game. Here he is in the block, and it's off of him. Heads up play by Bryant Nunnally. Well, nice slash to the uh, to the block there, and, and then good entry pass. They got it to him, but then he just couldn't finish. And Nunnally was the defensive stopper. We'll look to expect to see more points out of him tonight. He's averaging 2.3, but that was the defensive stopper right there. Damon Hockett now at the point for New Palestine. So Damon's a senior, and he can run the team. And he runs the football team quite well. Yep. From the corner, Stevens. I uh, couldn't get that one. He's got all the points thus far for the Dragons. Here's Caleb Garo. Miller. Inside. Scott. No. And that was swiped away by Brassfield, and it will stay with Newcastle. Nice move there on the block there to break himself free for what appeared to be an easy layup. Unfortunately, must have been tougher than I thought because he missed it. Yeah, Brassfield's tough. 6'6 six, six is what... He's listed at, and a, and a foul called on the inbound. It's going to be an illegal screen there. Let's see who's it on, 32. And that's Scott. Right after you were saying how great a move he had down low. Yeah, watch the, uh, he's going to set the screen right there. And I guess they just decided he could use a little too much of the, uh, of the shoulder. Uh, he looked a little flummoxed on the play. Yeah, I, I don't know. That was, that was one of those you could have called or could have not called. They, obviously, they called it. Nunnally, sharp pass to Hockett. Bryant Nunnally again. Through the lane, off the glass and in. And they're going to call it travel, unfortunately. It looked good. It does look good. I think he did, but I, I agree. I think he just took that, that extra step. NBA, man, not only is that good, but, uh, you know, they give you continuation on the next <laughs> shot. <laughs> that they would have. Here's some sharp defense from Stevens. And now breaking the press, maybe. Oh, too long on the pass. Welsh got a little too much air under that one, trying to get it to grow. 
Well, that's what you want of your coach, uh, Trent Whitaker, for New Palestine. Obviously, you press because you want to try to force turnovers. You want to try to force bad passes, and, that, and they got what they wanted. And that's just one of those game of inches. Just, just out in front of them too much. Here's Hockett and a foul called against New Pal. A couple offensive fouls early in this game. That's against Nunnally. You know, you, you watch a lot of basketball games at, at, at all kinds of different levels, and it seems like some officials just have that one particular call that they love to make, and, and whether it's block charge or whether it's, in this case, illegal screen. Uh, the young man there has made two illegal screen calls, and we're not even out of the first quarter. That was a nice pass by Matty. It'll end up back in his hands. Through the lane, the floater, no good. Soaring rebound by Welsh or by Scott, and Welsh misses the three. Well, Newcastle just a little bit cold here tonight. Hitting the brakes, Brassfield. The kiss is unanswered in a foul there. And to the chagrin of Daniel Cox, the head coach for Newcastle, looks like it's going to go against Trey Miller. Yeah, I think what they're saying, it's, it's one thing to block out. It's one thing to, to use your rear end to, to block somebody out. We're going to see the replay. It's another thing to start backing up furiously. Yeah. Boy, I don't know. I don't That's know. It's tough. Yeah, I, I don't know. I think Coach Cox has got something to complain about. Brassfield swatted away by Scott. Nunnally. Here's Hockett. Scott, strong defense, and he forces him on the line. Dawson Scott down low is just an impenetrable wall, Jim. Yeah, you know, I mean, credit the defense, but at the same time, really just sloppy play on both sides. Lots of turnovers already. New Pals got three. Newcastle's got three. And neither team can hit a shot. So this is not necessarily what I expected. These are two teams that both average in the 50s. Yeah, in the high 50s at that. That looks more like it, Jim. Caleb Grove from the corner. Pair of fives. It was about two and a half minutes to play in the first quarter. Yeah, I like what you're saying. So six turnovers between these two teams and ten total points. That sums up the first quarter quite well. Nunnally, Hockett, Brassfield not much involved in this possession. Thinking about it was Routabush. Breaking down the defense, Stevens off kilter, still tangling for it, and it's off of him. New Pal has, pl has played in the majority of their offense above the free throw line extended. I mean, that's just where they're setting. It's not necessarily where, where Newcastle is forcing them to be. That's just where they're setting their offense up, trying to space the floor, trying to get uh, uh, create lanes to slash and drive. And there's a kick ball. But, uh, yeah, so, I mean, it's just it, – it, it, eventually, New Pal may want to start to play a little bit lower, try to get more of an inside presence, which, again, Newcastle has a, a slight si size advantage, so that might be hard, easier said than done. Maddie breaking the press. Into the corner. How about another? Caleb Groh couldn't get it to go. Scott, another offensive rebound. And no answer coming from Gavin Welsh inside. And muscling one home was Caleb Groh. And the first lead of the game for Newcastle. Caleb's off to a good start there, already halfway to his uh, nightly average of 10. Nunnally. How, there's some offense from Bryant Nunnally. They need him to step up with Blaine Nunnally out. The old-fashioned flu. And Bryant gets a deuce. That ball slapped away from Taylor. Rescued by Welsh. Got inside. Tied up, and shots are coming for Dawson Scott. Well, Blaine, or I'm sorry, Brian picks up the foul there, his second, and uh, Coach uh, Whitaker's going to have to go to his bench here. That's going to be Jarrett Whitaker. Now, that name, from what Jim might have said, sounds familiar, but they are <laughs> uncle and nephew, not father's son. That is correct, and I talked to Coach Whitaker earlier in the season before we did a game on Nine Star TV, and I asked him about the young man, and he said, He's one of those kids. He's a senior. He's a program kid. Uh, I can rely on him to put him in a ball game. He's a good defender. He distributes the basketball well, uh, but he knows his role. Dawson Scott, the 78% free throw shooter, gets one of two. It's a one-point lead for Newcastle. 
in what has been an error-filled first quarter of this one. Not the most flowing offense, and speak of the devil, a turnover. Maddie with help in front. Call this one on the floor here. No shot. It's going to go against Ian Stevens, his first. Be an interesting second quarter with already four fouls called against New Pal. Just two on Newcastle. Down the lane is Taylor, and he draws more contact. on Jared Whitaker and at the line Colin Taylor he had 18 off the bench against Jay County he shot the lights out in that gym he was four for six from deep easily the best game of his season thus far and of his career the sophomore 67 percent from the line almost a Graceful put, uh, put back by Welsh came up a little short in the free throw shooting for Newcastle. They've left two points unanswered at this point. Going two for four so far this first quarter. Hockett. New pal changing up a little bit offensively. Started with two guys down on the block. Set screens up. That was Kendall Hill hitting the brakes. Ian Stevens down low. Couldn't get it. Scott the rebound, and then it's off of Damon Hockett. Yeah, they're going to say Damon got just to kind of reach around there and, and topped it out of bounds. I don't know if he did or not. He, he acted like he did, but, you know, you can't always trust the players' reactions as to what, what really happened on the floor. Uh, Jim, sometimes they see with their heart and yep. not with their, yep. their heads or eyes. Matty picked up the dribble, a little tricky pass. Here's a three. That's no good. And with one second left, good if it goes. And at the end of one, folks, 9-7, Newcastle against New Pal here on Nine Star Sports. At Nine Star Connect, our history spans back to the late 1800s, where family time, building livelihoods and neighborhoods, sharing stories of the day, and looking forward to chasing new dreams were important to all of us. Today, Nine Star still values these things. That's why we have a local 24-7, 365 support center. We are still here for you as it's been for the past 125 years. At Nine Star Connect, we're a different kind of company. And the difference is you. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Newcastle Fieldhouse. They say it's the largest and finest high school field house in the world, and I tend to agree. They didn't get treated to the most high-flying first quarter, though, Jim. No, we did not. And, you know, there's a little bit of a story behind that because a few months ago, maybe about a year ago, somebody actually came in here, and they must be starved for entertainment. Apparently, they counted <laughs> all the seats here, counted the seats in Seymour, and realized that Seymour actually had a few more seats. Now, the reason behind us are some pull-out bleachers that had been in here forever. You look at them, they, they look like they're aged wood. Well, those had been taken out to, to be repaired or whatever, and they were never reinstalled. And so it was a technicality. But there once, it is. Yeah, there they are. Once that technicality was pointed out, the folks at Newcastle hurriedly put those bleachers, and there's several sets of them, uh, back in here to make this the largest and finest high school field house in the world. And what's nice, if you sit on those extra bleachers and you get to sit next to Kent Benson and Steve Alford, because their picture's right on the wall. Absolutely. Two Newcastle legends. Looking into that corner is Trey Miller. And around the bend, Matty, not able to prod through that new pal defense quite yet. Matty, guarded tightly by Kendall Hill. Very close to a five-second call. Of course, I don't think anyone in the world really knows how that works, that whole <laughs> five-second thing. Depends on when they time it up. A little yeah, yeah. Force that pass did Matty. It's a turnover. Hill in transition. Here is Brassfield, and he's going to the line. Well, the foul situation, New Pal scene has five, which if you're Coach Whitaker when you're shorthanded, the last thing you really want is to have a bunch of kids in foul trouble. So uh, they're going to try to probably control that here in the second half when we watch the, uh, the replay here. The reach in there I think was uh, technically maybe before the shot, but they're going to go ahead and give him the continuation. And Brassfield, who was scoreless in the first quarter, gets a friendly hop here at the field house and now has his first point. And if you're going up against a player like Brassfield and you're Newcastle, 
What you don't want is him seeing the ball go through the basket, and that's what he's getting the chance to do here. Rattles down both of them. He's a 79% uh, kid, so probably came into the ballgame at 79%, so probably over 80 now. And that's obviously uh, more than fine at the high school level. You can shoot 80% from the line. Ideally, as a team, I think you want to be somewhere in the 70s. Here's Trey Miller. He's been above ideal shooting the three, although he's changed up his game, been able to work it inside more. Matty does take it inside, hooks it around, three on the way, down and out by Ethan Hinton. Popping one, Brassfield. Ooh, that was a little bit of a heat check there, and a foul will be called. Numerical harm, Ethan Hinton, number five for Newcastle, the culprit against number five for New Pal, Ian Stevens. Well, that brings the foul situation a little closer. Now it's uh, New Palestine five and Newcastle four. Stevens shoots about 60% from the line. That's not going to do it, but foul situation. Uh, Newcastle was two for four in the first quarter. New Pal now two for three. Stevens was able to level that out and give the Dragons the lead. He does. Third point or sixth point of the evening for Ian Stevens. Tight game thus far this first half. New Pal's biggest lead was three, and then Newcastle's biggest lead two. That ball stripped away by Brassfield. And then fought back. Great effort there by Matty. Brassfield is being just Hassled at midcourt almost. Open grow, no. And over the back on Stevens, and he's not happy about it. Yeah, I mean, technically you can go over the back as long as you don't make contact, and he did. I mean, you can jump behind somebody and, and grab a rebound out of the air, but I think he just leaned forward just enough and got a little bit of his chest on him. Yeah, this was just uh, an absolute <laughs> mess here, man. Just guys on the floor and ball bouncing around. They didn't let him breathe. I think Damon Hockett probably recognized that. It looked a little bit more like football than a basketball game for a moment there. Taylor driving on in. The reverse is good. And the lead shifts back to Newcastle. Good spacing by New Palestine. Just, again, trying to create those lanes for that right there. Strong drive by Hackett and a charge. Planting his feet in cement was Colin Taylor. And Damon Hockett has his first foul of the game. Yeah, these are it's going to be coming right into your living room here. You make the call. It's tough. I mean, was he set? Was he not set? Did, did the, the, the player with the ball dip the shoulder? He was set. That was an easy one. And that also puts Newcastle into the bonus for the rest of the way. Here's Matty. Taylor. Matty spinning through. Nice move and a nice finish. You know, Sam Matty is the senior, and he was the one guy, Jonathan, that when I was breaking this game down stat-wise and putting my names in the book that I recognized his name from last year. Uh, he's definitely the, the quarterback, the point guard of this basketball team, and he's the kind of kid that's going to get them going or not. And he averages 4.4 assists per game. And nice block there by Trey Miller. And here's Matty. See what the answer is after the nice defensive stop. Matty, not enough on that one. Might have forced that one. Hockett, quickly, Brassfield. Somehow was able to catch that ball. It's bobbled around. It will stay with New Pal. But then what a pass by Hockett. Yeah, it was one of those that... Uh Perfectly timed and over the top, and, you know, just another inch or two on the vertical leap. It might have been picked off here. From the other end. This is Matty. Yeah, I just think he. Now that's Man. him. That was a couple plays ago. That's him finishing real, ni real nice. They're going to call travel here, or what are they going to get? Nope. Another illegal screen. That's Matthew Berida, his first. Senior guard. 
And something that Trent Whitaker talked about is is he when you look at this team just structurally, there's five seniors, five juniors, a lot of experience, right? Mm-hmm. Well, most of those players are new, completely new roles, which is an understated problem. And it's impressive. New pals three and one to begin the year dealing with shifting everybody in the right spot. That's a nice move. Shift down the lane by Colin Taylor. Yeah, that's all part of the growing process. Obviously, in Indiana, you know, everybody qualifies for the playoffs. Fade no good by Brassfield. Great effort, though, by Barada. Barada checks it out. Brassfield stepping through the arms and drew some contact on the... His root. Yeah, the officials already indicated it's on the floor, so. Thirteen fouls in this first half between these two teams, and that doesn't include the turnovers, which is quite a bit. Is that more is a sloppiness or just sharp defense or mixture of both? I, I I'd say a mixture of both. It can be obviously again, it could be great defense, but I also think some of this stuff is unforced. Nice job. Nice move by Radabush. He averages three and a half per game, picks up his first two of the contest, and it is a five-point lead for the Trojans. Trey Miller. Two points thus far tonight. He's the three-point marksman for Newcastle. That one was pilfered by Stevens, and he'll have two. Well, the fifth turnover of the night for Newcastle. Here's another look at that. Nice steal. Good job of uh, anticipating the pass, getting in the passing lane. Good throw, no good by Stevens, who struggling at the line. That foul was on Colin Taylor, his second, by the way. And that's six on Newcastle. So Colin takes a seat. Coach Cox does not want him to get his third before the half. Leading scorer in the game thus far is even Ian Stevens. He has seven. 3.20 to go here, second quarter. Two-point game. Welsh. Doesn't need the screen from Scott. Follows it up for two. And just like that, the leading scorer on the season for Newcastle is in the scorebook. He averages over 14 points per game, and it's taken him almost the entire first half to get his first two points. Oh, man. The gate swung open. Well, good entry pass there, and again, they, they, they had Brassfield down on the block. I'd said earlier they, they may want to start thinking about going down inside more instead of having all, basically all five guys above the free throw line extended. They did that time. They bat, basically backed him up on the block, got him the ball. He converted. Welsh couldn't answer. Soaring rebound by Stevens. Here's Routabush. Stevens down low. That one is swiped away from Logan Strong. On the floor, up with it. Welsh. Floats it. Miller, a three, buried from the corner pocket. Just a dagger right there, you know, a turnover. And, again, New Palestine had a little bit of momentum offensively getting the ball inside, mixing it up. Turnover leads to a three. That's something Daniel Cox talked about, a similarity between these two teams. They're very happy with their defensive effort this season. And he said as as Newcastle's been playing some high-scoring games, low-scoring, they just want to keep defending as Brassfield punctures that defense for another deuce. Well, again, with both teams kind of being in foul trouble, nobody really wanted to step up, help side, and, and risk a foul, so they just let him go to the bucket. Popping the J. A little short on it was Gavin Welsh. And it's a one-possession game here, 90 seconds to go first half. Brassfield. I like to see Steele there. He wanted that shot, you could tell. But he, he very wisely realized he was being guarded closely and gave it up. Hey, don't take a bad shot. Let's try to set something up, take a good shot. We'll see if New Pal can get one. The head fake from Routabush. Kendall Hill. Double screen action. Stevens and that Trojan defense is not letting anybody get inside. 
Logan Strong in there working hard. His job is to set screens, work hard, rebound. Not necessarily a score. Brassfield, though, that is his job. But he left it a little long. The tip back finds Sam Matty. And Newcastle, if they want, they can hold for that final shot. Yeah, we'll see. Matty's looking over to Coach Cox saying, what do you want here? What do you want? And, again, it, you got options. You Looks like they're gonna more than happy. To, they're going to force New Palestine to come out and check them. Otherwise, they're going to just kind of let the clock tick down. You could have gone ahead and said, hey, we're going to work for a shot here. If we get an open one, if we get a lane, we'll take it. Obviously, Newcastle has chosen to play for one. And maybe even Newcastle. you got a three-point shooter like Trey Miller who's just gotten his groove back on. Here he is looking inside with eight seconds to go. Crow down. And this one from half court is Klings off the top of the backboard. That shot from Grow was a two-pointer, not a three, but an emphatic end to the first half by Caleb Grow. And Newcastle leads New Palestine 22-17, to Jim. Yeah, I mean, right now, again, play picked up a little bit there in the second quarter. So I'm looking forward to the, to the second half. We'll have that for you in a little while, folks. Don't go anywhere. You're watching Nine Star Sports. Nine Star Energy customers are on a real-time pricing electric rate plan. The main difference with a real-time pricing rate plan is that when you use electricity is just as important as how much electricity you use. The cost to deliver power is changing. Real-time pricing is broken into two pricing periods, on-peak and off-peak. You will benefit from lower electricity pricing during most times of the day when energy demand is lower. And electricity prices will be higher from 4 to 8 p.m. when demand for electricity is generally higher. If you can make small changes, like running the dishwasher or doing laundry during lower priced times of the day, you may be able to benefit from your real-time pricing rate plan. To learn more, visit 9starconnect.com.
Hello, everybody. Welcome back in for the second half. You can see that scoreboard right there, 22-17. New Pal trails Newcastle. Uh, not the most impressive offensive numbers. I think Steve Alford would have been thrilled with it. <laughs> but uh, what what was the – why are we seeing such a small, short scoring output so far tonight, Jim? Well, first of all, I think Steve would have had 22 himself at <laughs> halftime. Uh, you know, neither team really shoots the ball particularly well in the first half. Jonathan, I, I thought Newcastle had a bunch of really good looks. Three-point shots, two-point shots, drives to the rim. And they just didn't go. They didn't fall. They couldn't finish. New Palestine you on the other end, I think that the, the shots have been contested a little bit better by Newcastle. New Pal has not had as, as many just open looks. They've had to work for all their buckets. Honestly, I think the the, the, the loss of Blaine Nunnally not being here yeah. has stalled this New Palestine offense more than anyone probably cares to admit. Again, you want to stay positive. If you're Coach Whitaker, tell your guys, hey, listen, you know what? We didn't play very well. Good news, bad news. Bad news, we didn't play very well in the first half. Good news, news we're only down five. So you're getting the ball right here coming out of the uh, out of the, the, the halftime break, and let's see if New Palestine can get on track offensively. But, again, credit some of this to Newcastle's defense. Leading scorers in the first half, Ian Stevens had seven for the Dragons. Caleb Grow had seven for Newcastle. And Newcastle, they are on a stretch where they've had a, four different leading scorers in four straight games. That pass was a little too ambitious by Brassfield. And Newcastle looking to add to their five-point lead, which is their biggest of the game. Well, the first possession of the game for New Palestine ended in a turnover, and the first possession for Newcastle of the ball game ended in a turnover. So we're on pace to see if we can't tie that. <laughs> They're uh, consistent thus far. Up to Newcastle, can they continue that trend? They hope not. <laughs> Maddie guarded by Hockett. Now the lengthier Stevens on him. Oh, almost. they almost got it, Jim. Almost. almost. Somewhere in <laughs> Vegas. I don't know what the line is on this, but. <laughs> it's setting the casinos ablaze. <laughs> Miller. Scott's down low, wanting it. Trapped in the corner for the moment as Welsh. And it stays, stays with Newcastle. Newcastle. Yeah, really interesting choice there to dribble the ball down into the corner and pick it up again as a coach. These are things you show them on film. You're going to see it right here. Don't do this. You know, any youngsters watching at home, take the ball right to the corner and then trap yourself. Oh, Miller's in trouble too. And here's Maddie back to the stable hands of Sam Maddie, who's averaged over four assists per game this season, which is outstanding in the IHSAA. Miller, the J, left it short. Scott gets the rebound. Hot potato, grow. A couple steps inside the three-point arc, and he put it off the back of the iron. Good awareness there by Scott, though, to kick it back out, realizing he was under the bucket, did not have a shot. This effort by Brassfield's a little long. He'll get another chance at it and bounce it right off of Scott. And Dawson Scott, who is described by his head coach as a workhorse, as you see getting a bucket on this end of the floor, Sam Matty now has four points. Boy, and he worked for it, too. He earned that nice job going to the basket and having great body control. Bending around, waiting at the last second to get the ball off the fingertips. Oh, nice cradle through the lane by Nunnally. And you'll have two free throws coming up. That's Scott's second foul. Or it won't be a free throws. It was on the floor. No continuation. That's again. I, I thought the official signaled that, but I wasn't sure. Brassfield, the one side dribble to steady himself, and he knocks down the three. He has nine points. Didn't like the first look, so he thought he'd just pound it in the ground one time, and, and suddenly the look got better. It was funny. It was the, re the defender was able to land and almost get recalibrate himself to yeah. jump back up, and Brassfield was like, ah, I got it. Hey, you know what? As a coach, you, you know, when a kid, kid hits that shot, you just say, yeah, nice, nice job. Way to shoot it. Normally you don't want people to put the ball on the floor unnecessarily, but I think that did reset him. It just kind of got his trigger back, and obviously uh, he proved it by draining it. And in the way this game's going thus far, New Pal needs Brassfield to have one of those great shooting nights as Grows 3 is down and out. Uh, there's no doubt about it. I mean, the, the two guys that need to step up for New Pal are Brassfield and Stevens. They're the two scorers. The rest of the guys, Routabush, you see they're setting a nice screen. Hockett left that three short. Uh, not the most accurate three-point shooter. Well, this, this, this numbers don't. This isn't fair. That's the second three of the year. Yeah. But uh, left that one a little short. Yeah, and not necessarily, you know, his role. And, and those are things, If you know, speaking of Newcastle and Indiana basketball with Alfred and, 
and uh, and Kent Benson. But Coach Knight used to say, you know what, he's not a shooter. I don't want him to shoot. And if he shoots, he's going to sit next to me. I'm not saying that that's obviously what you got to do with hockey, but that's just not his role. Could it be some guys just trying to press to fill in for that nunnally lacking? There's no doubt about it. And that's one of the things that you got to tell your kids is like, listen, one guy can't just come out here and play suddenly way better. We need all eight of you, everybody that gets in this ball game, to play just a little bit better, just an inch better. If all eight of you give me this much, then we fill that gap. But if one guy tries to do too much, it's not going to work. Well, so far, New Pal has four players who have scored in this game. And almost all of the points, all but four of them, have come from Ian Stevens, who averages in double figures, and Steele Brassfeld. And losing the ball in the lane was Routabush. Well, that's an example of getting the ball to a guy in a bad spot. Yeah, they got the pass, but again, he was, he was very closely guarded. It wasn't a great pass. It kind of bounced up into his midsection, and, and he wasn't able to control it. As a guard, you gotta, it's one thing to get the ball to somebody. It's, somebody. it's something else to get it to him in a good spot. Catch and release. Trey Miller buries a three. That's getting the ball to a guy in a good spot right there. <laughs> Compare and contrast, right? Yeah, yeah. You could use that in any of your high school classes, kids. Here at Newcastle, <laughs> New Pal, wherever. Nunnally. Has to check it out. Hockett drives in, and a charge is called. And again, I think it's a pretty good call. We'll probably get a replay. Our, our great camera kids do a great job on the cameras. The guys, you know, John and Bill over there, you're going to see him just drive the lane. 21 is going to be sitting there growing a beard. <laughs> yeah, he could have. He has a couple days of growth there. Yeah. By the way, great camera work tonight from Dave Anderson, Zane Bundy, Lexi Torres and Mario Stefferson. Drew Smith on the graphics, Bill McKenna, the director, and John Painter produces and does all those replays. So, and, you know, and they've effort. got the tough job because to try to make you and I look good is, is, a, is a yeoman's effort. It takes a task. yeoman's effort, yeah. I, we literally, Jim and I, sit in the makeup chair for five <laughs> hours before game just to make us look remotely presentable. Absolutely. I normally have one eye in the middle of my head, but they're able to, <laughs> to bring it into two. And, and, it's, uh, a, it's amazing what they could do. 21st yeah. century wonders. Yeah. Computer graphics are, are amazing. Uh, what's also been amazing, this, this second, or, well, third quarter, Newcastle able to grow their lead a little bit. Uh, still low scoring, 4-2 to two by the margin, 4-3 to three by the margin. But uh, Brassfield getting into a rhythm a little bit, but Newcastle looks so poised out there on offense. Yeah, again, you know, you're not going to win. You know, if we go double up the scores from here, you're not going to win many ball games with 40 points. If you're New Pal, 54 might get you some W's. In fact, you're getting closer to to Newcastle's average there. I mean, they average 59 and a half. So uh, Newcastle, like you said, it feels like they're getting a little more untracked and playing with a little more rhythm. New Pal's still kind of struggling to put it together. And there's some good offensive teams here in the Hoosier Heritage this year. And this is the second conference game for both of these teams. But if you're going to – you need to get that offense to click. we got a team like Mount Vernon who's averaging 69 points per game. Greenfield Central is uh, 58. Some teams can really put it up out here. Here's Maddie, And just – just so calm and collected as they work it down low to grow the one firm step and the nice jumper. Excuse me, Gavin Welsh. Really good job there of just getting the basketball. He was double teamed. He was able to twist and turn and just good wrist action, laid the ball right over the rim. And a big lead now. Nine points, and that will help Bryant Nunnally. Careful through the lane. Just kind of took a little walk through the tulips there, but he did not travel and laid it off the glass. Welsh checks it down. Scott, the hook. No. Brassfield. Down low. Hockett olays the defense and has his first two points of the contest. Really nice uh, shot fake there, and then New Pal comes out in the press. That trims the lead down to five, much more manageable. And there's a turnover, Brassfield. He has Hockett with him, and Brassfield does not need it. And a timeout by Daniel Scott. A little sloppy play by his leader, and the lead is down to three. 
Yeah, Coach Cox could not have called that timeout as we watched the replay. Good trapping defense here, just aggressiveness. Those long arms of Steel Brassfield. And this is where, about right here is where Coach Cox wanted to call the timeout, but he had to wait until <laughs> the ball went through. I'll tell you, Steele Brasfeld, last year against Newcastle, he had the game of his life, almost literally, 32 points, career high. He was 6 of 9 from 3, 13 rebounds. He combined with Blaine Nunnally for 54 points on 48% shooting. Yeah, you know, I actually graduated the same year that uh, high school that Alfred did, and I remember I tell people all the time, Alfred and I, Combined for 59 points one night. He got 57 against Connors. I got two against Waldron. But still, 59 points That's between impressive. the two of us. Thank you, you. you can really you yeah. can hang your hat on that. <laughs> this is coming up, folks, January 7th, Mount Vernon. We just talked about their high scoring, those Marauders. Yeah, well, I have not seen Mount Vernon play this year. Last year they were impressive, and i got to believe they got just about everybody back. So i got to believe they're, they're just as good, if not better. Nice find. Miller misses in the corner, but Welsh had an eye on the side of his head to be able to spot him over there. Well, that's what you want if you're Newcastle. You want that shot. Brassfield. And the foul will be called. He's going to be on 32. That's going to be Gavin. Or Dawson Scott's third. Oh, they did go with Dawson Scott. Oh, yeah, 32. I'm sorry. Uh, you're good. Second on the team for Newcastle, and here is Brassfeld again, 79% on the season, though. He's uh, missed one tonight. Actually, he was perfect before that, and I messed it up, and I was going to correct yeah, it, but then the he broadcaster's did. Broadcaster's jinx, right? Ah, I'm sorry, Steele. Steals like a lot of kids today. Again, just gets the ball and almost immediately maybe one dribble and shoots it. I can remember again there was an old guy named Steve Alford used to three dribbles, wipe the socks, and the whole process. Oh, he missed them both. Well, the margin's still three with uh, a buck forty left here in the third quarter. New pal pressing against the miss. Maddie lobs it deep, bailed out by Miller, who makes it really nice with that jumper. That's 10 for Trey Miller. You know, for a three-point shooter, Trey is a wonderful first name. Yeah, no doubt I just realized that. that. Miller is a great last name for a three-point shooter. Yeah, there's Brassfield. Been, there's been some good uh, three-point shooters by the last name of Miller, haven't there? Yeah, more than once. A couple. Pressure from New Palestine. Newcastle's really not done a great job of handling this pressure tonight. They just broke that down, but Newcastle New has gotten some hay out of that. Uh, and Trey Miller is begging for this ball. They finally get it to him. Guarded by the stingy Hockett. Welsh. And they're going to walk it out, I think, and maybe play for the last one again unless Newcastle comes out and presses the action. And right on cue, here's Kendall Hill. Still giving enough window. A half minute remaining in a three-point ball game here in the field house. Yeah, Kendall is just getting in there enough to start the count, but then he backs out. So just right there you saw it. So the count restarts. Now there's no count. Now he's got to go. Seven seconds. Matty, nice spin down low off the glass by Taylor. And Hockett got it away. Oh, it was just to the right. And it's 33-28 Newcastle going into the fourth quarter here on Nine Star Sports. My name is Patty Potty, and I'd like to talk to you about all those kinds of convenience products. People are flushing down the toilet, clogging up our sewer system, and causing expensive repair bills. They might flush down, but they sure don't flush out. Make sure you trash them. Don't flush them. Only flush the three P's. Pee, poo, and paper. Toilet paper, that is. And remember, no wipes in those pipes. This important message was brought to you by Nine Star Connect, your water and sewer provider. Welcome back, everybody. The Trojan just left the middle of the court, and that was a that was a fun little timeout. Fun third quarter. It's, it's still just two-possession game. We're going into the fourth. And Sam Maddy, this is how it ended. Doink. 
A nice job of just finding the open man on the block, and really New Pals lucky they didn't get called for a body foul there. That would have been a uh, old-fashioned three-point play, assuming that they could have hit the free throw. Let's get ready for this fourth quarter to start. Uh, there's a lot of players and coaches all wearing the same shirts tonight. Uh, you'll see uh, from the band, the cheerleaders, the head coaches, they're all supporting this charity called Archie's Promise, which is for families of infant loss. There you see him, the gray shirts there. And the story behind it, Archie Cox was Daniel Cox's son who was born at four pounds back on April 16th. And the, the Coxes had four days with him before, before he passed away. The put back on the floor, it's all bobbled around. Dawson Scott is fouled. And they announced before the game that this so far this year, the school had raised $7,070 for that cause, which is very impressive for a high school. And it's just neat, all of Newcastle rallying their support uh, behind Daniel Cox and his wife and trying to support other families who've had similar struggles as Dawson Scott now has two points. Yeah, and a, and a decent crowd here tonight. They, they passed the bucket, I think, between the second and third, or I mean, uh, first and second quarter, I believe it was, uh, collecting even more donations. And Scott couldn't get that other one, but the rebound finds his teammate, Ethan Hinton, who a little helter-skelter delivery somehow stays with Newcastle. Yeah, Hinton found himself in trouble there. That's a situation where a lot of times a coach will call timeout just to save the possession. Uh, a heady ball player will, will call timeout. I don't believe that Newcastle's called any this half, so they got five. Here's Scott. Thinking about it. Matty sizing up Nunnally. Welsh. The J just off the mark, and Brassfield has the rebound. And Steel Brassfield, as advertised, 13 points through three quarters tonight. Radebush. Brassfield, good! Well, they worked him off two screens there, and that's what New Pal's going to have to try to do. Again, it's, it's a little bit different without Blaine Nunley kind of directing. And Blaine was also a threat. I mean, he scores about nine or ten points a game himself. That foul's going to go against Bryant Nunley, the twin brother of Blaine. Foul's not really an issue yet in this fourth quarter. 6.54 to play. New Powell with three and Newcastle with two. And no rush are the Trojans. Coach Whitaker going eight or nine deep tonight, obviously because he has to. Kendall Hill getting some good minutes, doing a nice job. That's good for Cody. You know, it's one of those things about having Nunley out. You know, there may be a ball game later in the year, section, or maybe we're, we're, we're maybe he gets in foul trouble. Mattily swings it. Matty swings it around, and that one rebounded by Scott. An answer three. How about a two? Good by Gavin Welsh. Well, we talked before the game, Jonathan, about how well Newcastle kind of cleans the boards, and, and uh, they did have a, a, an advantage rebound-wise coming in. Now, New Palestine could help themselves a little bit by maybe blocking out a little bit more, getting a body on somebody. There's Kendall Hill, just a little short on that jumper. Nunnally in the lane. The putback, no, volleyed around. And now come the Trojans with the ball. Up five. And it won't be seven, at least not yet. Brassfield, teammate to his left, takes it himself. Not enough off the glass. One tumbles, and it will go to the Trojans. Yeah, good call by the official. Ian Stevens got in there and was just off balance a little bit and, and got his hand on the ball as it went out of bounds. You see Brassfield kind of crossover dribble, stepping around, just could not finish, and you're going to see it go off a number five. And he brought it from so far down. Yeah. That instead of keeping it high, anyway, still a five-point deficit for the Dragons. Across the timeline comes Newcastle. Tricky on that sideline. Around the bend, they swing it. Scott, nice cut. And off the glass and in by Taylor. 
Well, if you're Coach Whitaker, you don't want this thing to get too far out of hand. You're down seven, five minutes to play here. So if this ends up being an empty possession, Newcastle goes down to the score, you might want to call a timeout and refocus your kids, rest them a little bit. Yeah, big possession here indeed. Brassfield guarded well. Couldn't get the jumper. Inside Stevens, the foul is called. It's going to go against Maddie, I believe, and it does. Just as first. Now, Ian Stevens has had an adventure at the free throw line tonight. Yeah, obviously, again, the junior, this is just something that he's got to improve this part of his game. You're, you know, everybody's trying to get to the next level. Mm -hmm. And uh, right now he came in tonight shooting 60%. I've got him, that's his third miss. So I got him three for five at the line. I'm sorry, two for five. He got that one. Takes him back up to 50%, gives him eight points. The timeout's been called. Funny thing about even Ian Stevens uh, talking to Trent Whitaker, he, he loves Ian Stevens' game. Gym rat, works really hard, but for... The life of him, he can't put any weight on. And his parents <laughs> said that he eats him out of the house, and it just just goes into kinetic energy. Just. Well, you know, I'm willing to take one for the team if they want to pay for it, and I'll let the kid drive around with me for a couple months. And I'll take him to places like Man's Grill on the southwest side and yeah. Working Man's Friend downtown, some of the uh, the uh, local uh, places there in Indianapolis where you can go in and for about 7 bucks eat about 40 pounds worth of food. So I'll be more than happy to do it. Got to get his parents to agree to pay for it. Yeah, you know, it's anything to help the team out. I'm nothing if not a team player. I appreciate you, Jim. I'm sure New Pal will too. We'll ra we'll pass a little collection bucket just yeah, to raise money for your you trip. Go. Thank you. A little under, a little under five minutes to go. It's a six-point game as Newcastle's getting ready to inbound this, and they can't put it out of reach yet, but they can continue pacing, outpacing the Dragons with another sol solid possession. And New Pal with ball pressure, but not not the uh, full court press. Oh, a hot pass inside. Here's the kick. The three is not down by Caleb Groh, and a much needed rebound by Ian Radebush. But a turnover. Yeah, that pass was just horribly telegraphed and kicked out of bounds. So we're trading turnovers. Well, not a uh, coach's clinic. No, uh, last couple, last 20 seconds. Yeah, Radebush though just came down, and, and I. Saw that pass coming from downtown, and so did the uh, the back defender. And then just uh, again, just not a, a good pass. It was all up into his midsection. Here we got a little equipment failure. Uh, blew his tire. Yeah. This is a lot of pressure here. You're tying you're tying your shoe. There's yeah, a thousand people watching. Yeah. Years ago, when when uh, when I was the twelfth man on a bad team in in varsity basketball, one of our players. Blew his shoe out, and he wore the same size I did, so I just gave him my shoes. And coach looked at me and said, where are your shoes? I said, I gave them to Singer. He said, don't you want to play? I said, I'd rather win. He said, you're right. Singer, take his shoes and get in the ball game. Always so a I, team player. Yeah, I was doing the shoe thing long before Dennis Rodman did it. <laughs> Rodman got all the credit for sitting on the bench with no shoes on. Man, I was doing that in the 80s. It's going to go against Caleb Groh. I don't, know why, I don't know why Dennis Rodman never – or thanked you for it. That's well, just really an injustice. Yeah, yeah, he got all the pub, but it really it was just kind of my act. Man, that Rodman. An act himself, and uh, New Pal needs a good finishing act here as Nunnally couldn't get it to go, and another strong rebound by Dawson Scott. That's to the chagrin of the New Pal faithful here, and then Nunnally fouls him at midcourt. Well, his fourth, and I just think some frustration there. You know, and again, I played the game a long, long time ago, and, you know, you drive the bucket, you, you, you take a shot that's a little bit forced, it doesn't go, so you feel like, hey, i got to make up for this, and i got to go out there, and so you try a little too hard defensively, and you, all you do is really pick up a foul. Seen it a lot down through the years as I've called games and certainly saw it when I was playing as well. Here's Grow. And I use that term playing loosely. I practiced. <laughs> I practiced varsity basketball. Hey, there's no shame in that. Yeah. I didn't get to play a lot. You know, there's a lot of people who can't say that they practice college <laughs> high school basketball. <laughs> Colin Taylor can say that as he kicks it over yeah. to Grow. And a timeout called by Dan Cox. It's a full one. You know, Co Coach Cox just, I mean, again, you could feel it getting a little frantic there 
and you know, rather than risk another turnover, he's just going to call timeout, refocus his kids. Guys, we got a six-point lead. There's three and a half minutes to play and some change. You know, why are we dribbling around like our hair's on fire? We got time to, to, to be patient and work for a shot. You know, Dan Cox, what is cool visiting with him before the game, he was talking about how he played basketball here. He went to Newcastle. And and this is my first time broadcasting a game here at the Newcastle Fieldhouse. He's like, it's going to be a treat. You're going to love it. And I have. But he was like, it's interesting. When, you're, when you play for a team like the Trojans, they practice here. They're used to being here. Yeah. Sometimes you forget just the, the mystique of the place or, yeah. or the significance of one. And then you get... Uh, someone like him comes back and is coaching his alma mater. You get a whole new appreciation. You're not just playing there, not just playing in your high school gym. You're like, oh, yeah, this is. there's a lot of great players who played in this field house. Yeah, and you know what? This is such an iconic and historic gym. For years they hosted a sectional, and then they hosted the regional. And back then, I mean, in those days, in the 50s, 60s, 70s, and even into the 80s and 90s, this place was sold out. I mean, it seats 8,400 people, but – with standing room probably a, a very, a, almost almost 10,000. And, uh, you know, this, this place used to be packed. Actually a decent crowd here tonight. As you look around, remember, you see a lot of empty seats, but there's 8,400 of them. Yeah. That's so there's probably about 1,500 in here tonight. But at one time, a, a ticket to a Newcastle uh, Trojan basketball game was a pretty hot commodity in this town. Yeah, it can kind of be almost like the brickyard when the crowds would be dwindling and you'd be like, there's no one there. Well, there's still t- yeah, 40,000 people there. Absolutely. Here's a three that goes unanswered by Colin Taylor, who shot the ball well tonight. He's got nine points. Caleb Grow. Scott very wisely on that rebound. Just kick it out. You, you know, you're winning. You're, you don't need a, a forced shot. He could have. He was near the block. He could have forced things, but he didn't. The jumper underneath and Scott, and we'll see how the referees side. They've they've gone against the player who's done the excessive box out so far tonight. Yeah, I think the same thing's going to happen here. It's going to go against Damon Hockett, his fourth. So again, he just kind of gets his oh. body underneath. You got to let him land somewhere and along the way. I had the same thing, Jim. They have five for him on the jumbotron. Well, jump big scoreboard, not jumbotron. Well, but that's about a. That's about as jumbotron as you're going to get in, in this level. <laughs> it's a great score. Yeah, book. they got him for five, and, and I had him for four. But I went to Our Lady. If we don't count so good, we've gone over this. It's a small school mm. in the inner city. So uh, don't, well, ever, hey. don't ever trust my book. Hey, you know, the Blessed Mother covered a lot of people. <laughs> Sorrows can't t- count too good. <laughs> and here's New Pat with the ball. Nice block by Ian Stevens there. Down the lane, off the glass. No, but a blocking foul is called. It's on Trey Miller. And Brassfield, who had a rough trip to the line last time where he went, he offered. These are two very important ones with 250 left. Yeah, that, that foul was called on Miller because at the last second he flinched and turned his body. He was more than set. But again, at the last second he moved. Uh, you got to be a man to take that charge. You really do. And there's, a, there's an art to it. There's a way to protect yourself, and and uh, at the last second, he just decided, you know what, I don't want any part of this. It's a big young man going to blow me up. Hey, 6'6". Six, six. That's yeah. a giant coming down at yeah. me. I missed a second, though. Five-point game getting late here at Newcastle. Breaking the press with ease, and then a trap comes and grows in big trouble. And the foul is called. And Kendall Hill was looking at the ref quizzically, I think would be a nice way of putting it. I thought the actual reach-in was on Stevens, but at the big scheme of things, it doesn't matter. Stevens has only got two, so it wouldn't have put him in any Oh, tricky one. Kendall Hill, how about this for a makeup? No, he missed it, but the follow by Brassfield. 19 with an exclamation point. Scott answers. Every time New Palestine takes a couple steps forward, Newcastle answers. And Dawson Scott, how valuable has he been tonight? Not with the massive amount of points scored, but just the smart play all game long. Well, you need guys like that. You know, you need guys that uh, can make those those heads up plays. That's the third foul on Caleb Grow. Steel Brassfeld. 
Just off the mark from deep. Loose ball gathered in by Welsh. He's got a couple running mates, takes it his way. He's tied up. Great effort on the defensive end by Kendall Hill. Yeah, really great job of tying that ball up, and it looks like the, the arrow favors New Palestine, so they're going to get the ball. Great job again, camera work. Well, coming right at the cameraman, too, and he stayed there, unlike the young man who, who kind of moved when, it, when the brass field was going to run over, and our camera guy stood strong. That's, that's, a, that's a man's game, grown man's game down yeah. there. Yeah. Big possession for the Dragons. Hill, Nunnally, nice spin, off balance, drawing the foul. Now he was definitely pushed. We'll see, did they make it a shooting foul or it looks like they are. Would have been very close to say it was kind of on the, on the floor because he was kind of twisting around as he was driving the lane. These are big free throws coming for Bryant Nunnally, who is 0 for 1 on the season. No pressure. And he misses the front end of the one and one. No, However, it's two, it's two shot foul. See how they reacted. They fooled me. Well, the, the official <laughs> yeah. definitely when he was over at the scores book definitely said two shots. That's what I thought I saw. Now, Coach Cox is saying, because, again, it could have been close. I mean, you could have argued that, that he was fouled before he spun and went up. And the official said that he was doing it in the middle of that turn up. Makes the second. That's his first made free throw of the season. Gives him five points. It's still a two-possession game. For the buck 40 left. Sam Matty. Lost the ball. And a very untimely turnover for Newcastle. Breathes a lot of life into these Dragons. Well, you know, both teams have been taking care of the basketball much better after that basically horrendous first quarter. That's a huge turnover right there. And, again, credit the Dragon pressure. Brassfield. Ah, couldn't quite get it to go. He wanted a foul call. Trey Miller the other way. Slows it down. A little careless with the basketball. Up with it. Brassfield. That ball deflected by Stevens. He fires a three. It is no good. Stevens gets the rebound. And the foul is called against the Trojans to the chagrin of the officials in the bleachers in green. Now, this will be a one-on-one -on -one because it was on the floor. But, again, you got to let the player land. And you see here as, as he goes up and he backs up into him right there, great camera work. And, again, that's, that's all that was. But the same thing happened down here with Hockett and everyone, you know, in, in Newcastle thought it was a great call. And now that it's down here, it's a horrendous call. It's the exact same call. And the refs, they've been consistent on that all game long. Second yeah. someone's booty gets uh, scooched out a little too much and they start walking back. They yeah. called it. Yeah, the officials have had – Absolutely no impact, which is what you want. They've called a really good game. They've had no effect on this ball game at all. Stevens drains that big free throw there. And it's a three-point game, Jim. I'll be surprised if uh, on the make or the miss if New Palestine does not full court press again. Uh, couldn't get the second to go. Still one possession. And there is the full court pressure from Stevens. And he commits the foul. And that's a good foul. He doesn't like to call, but that's just, again, competitive nature of a young man. Way too much body as he's leaning forward. You're going to see it on the replay here. Watch how he leans in here, right? There. And that's not an offensive foul at all. It's probably one of those ones. I mean, anyone who's played basketball, you committed it, where in your mind, I was there. Yeah, but, uh, nah, he wasn't there. Gavin Welsh, 50% on the season. Made the first. Well, you know, again, all you can do is try to foul the right guy, and a guy who, you know, only shoots 50% from the line would, in my book, qualify as the right guy to foul. And here's a big one. And then if he hits him, he hits him. It's back up to five. 60 seconds to play in Newcastle Fieldhouse. New pal, when he's to get a shot as quickly as possible here, within reason, that don't force it up, but... You don't want the clock to tick away. Well, here's the guy you want to have the ball, Brassfield. Gives it up, Nunnally. Likes to drive. And that foul on Colin Taylor will be his third. Well, exactly what New Palestine wants, and that's to try to score 
while the clock is stopped. They are very close to the double bonus, too. Yeah, now that's one that, again, not a ton of contact there. That's one of those deals where you could call a foul or you could not call a foul. And it looks like there may be a little blood on the jersey of one of the Newcastle players. Maybe somebody's got a nosebleed and doesn't know it. Um, Coach Cox may be forced to take a timeout, or the officials are going to give him a, basically an equipment timeout, for lack of a better term. A couple things, the trainer's working furiously to wipe it off. There's other things. I would imagine there's all kinds of, um, with Newcastle playing at home, they could go with an alternative yeah. jersey. I know years ago when I coached uh, both high school football and baseball, we always carried extra jerseys in case something happened. And then we could always just put a kid in a new number. You know, maybe it's like an uh, IndyCar. If you, you bump into somebody, you get a little paint on it. Maybe yeah. they just went so hard. There's been so much contact down low <laughs> that the red on New Pal just, just, just rubbed, rubbed off, off yeah. on the Dragon or the Trojans jerseys. It looks like we're back in the game here. Happy to have you with us on Nine Star Sports. I'm Jonathan, Jim Leisure to my left. We got a close one here with 47 and two tenths and two big free throws. We're a one and one opportunity. Maybe two big free throws. The Dragons certainly hope for from Bryant Nunnally. Left to short. Easy rebound for Gavin Welsh, and the Dragons are in a tough spot now. Getting across the timelines, oh. Taylor. Boy, they're going to call a foul, but again, I thought he tied it up. It was close. That's the fourth on Stevens. And that's a player that New Pal could ill afford to lose. Yeah, it's really hard to tell. Honestly, from that camera angle, we were as far away from the call as the official was who called it. <laughs> Banged it in. Six-point game. This one would make it a three-possession lead for Newcastle. And Colin Taylor continues a strong play. Last time out, he had 18. He has 11 tonight against New Pal. And Newcastle is this close to a 6-1 and one start. Well, you're either hitting your free throws or you're not. And right now, Newcastle is. New Pal seems not, and the turnover ain't helping. Taylor. Foul called, and they're getting lively here in the Newcastle Fieldhouse. Colin Taylor is going to go to the line, came into the ball game shooting 67%. I have him three of four from the line tonight. Now, there is a young man here, Caleb Grow, who is 13 for 13, shooting 100% from the line. That's the guy you don't want to foul. Not at all. Although Taylor is shooting like he's shot 50. 13 for 13 from the line. Yeah, coming into the ball game, he'd only hit four free throws all season. He's hit one, two, three, four tonight, four out of five. Make it five. 13 points for Colin Taylor, the sophomore, getting well-deserved high fives. And the lead is the biggest of the night for Newcastle. Coming up next for these two teams, they will play tomorrow. Newcastle will welcome Muncie Burris, who is winless, uh, at least so far in the early season. And then Franklin Central comes calling to New Palestine. That is also tomorrow, 7.30. That's an old, old, old rivalry I read in the pregame notes that Andrew Smith provides. This is coming up on January 7th, Greenfield Central and Mount Vernon. Big county rivalry, sectional rivalry. Uh, Mount Vernon is awfully, awfully good. And, and uh, Greenfield is a decent team. They're a lot like New Palestine. In fact, John Herrick and I called the uh, Greenfield uh, New Palestine game uh, last Friday, I believe. Some people after the game was over kind of called it an instant classic. I'm not sure I would go that far. It was an entertaining game of spurts. One team would get up by five to seven. The other team would come back and tie, go up by five you know, or seven. And then the other, so it was a, a back and forth affair, very entertaining ball game. Uh, but yeah, Mount Vernon, I would think, is probably the class of this conference uh, until we see different. 
They averaged 69 points per game over their first three games, too. That is no joke. Radebush. And a lot of things have to happen in a fury for the Dragons. That won't help. Rebound, Dawson Scott. He's been in the right place, right time all night long. Maddie up the floor. Welsh finishes it off in style. Well, Coach Whitaker out of that timeout basically drew up a play, and it was, you know, got exactly what you wanted. You got Ian Stevens, one of your best players, for a shot at an open three, and unfortunately not only did it not go, I don't even think he hit the rim, and then Gavin Welch comes down and just puts an exclamation point on it. You saw that, that bucket does count. Uh, the jumbotron, as it were, uh, showed about two seconds left as he flushed it down. And it's a big win for Newcastle. They're 2-0 and in the Hoosier Heritage Conference. 6-1 uh, and one on the season, Jim. What's your first taste of the Trojans? I, I like the basketball team. I mean, again, there's a lot of different kids that can beat you uh, that by scoring points, but they're also very heady, if you will. They don't make a lot of mistakes after that really bad first quarter. Uh, I only had them for three more turnovers the rest of the ball game, so they settled back down in nicely. And again, if, you, if they can force you to play their game, they've got a shot. Now, again, against a team like Mount Vernon that likes to run the floor and has great perimeter shooting, might be difficult. But if Newcastle can force you to play their game, they're, they're awfully hard to beat. And then New Pal, now 3-2, and two, pick up their first conference loss. The absence of Blaine Nunnally uh, spoke volumes tonight. And they, they, the score is bigger than the game was. Yeah, no doubt about it. I mean, again, this is, this is an 11-point ball game. It wasn't quite that way. It was always, it seemed like, a five-point ball game all night long. Believe me, Blaine Nunnally is worth at least five points a night, uh, both in his defensive play and his assists and his ability to score the ball. He's a 10-point guy scoring-wise. So, again, the final score is not really in, indicated uh, of, of, of the closest of this ball game. But, again, Coach Whitaker and his squad, they learned something tonight. They had some kids on the floor tonight in Barada and uh, Hill and Whitaker, guys that I haven't seen much all year. And uh, so those kids got valuable minutes. They've got them on film. They can coach them and say, hey, this is where we need to get better. And then more importantly, again, later on in the season, I started to allude to it earlier, and then the action took over. But you may come into a game where Nunley's in foul trouble or fouls out of the ball game. Yeah. Well, you can't just play with four like Norman Dale did in Hoosiers. you got to run somebody out there. And now Coach Whitaker at least can decide who he wants to run out there. Well, a lot to chew on as we get ready for the final push till Christmas. New Pal plays Franklin Central on Saturday tomorrow. Newcastle has Muncie Burris and then Mount Vernon on December 23rd. And thank you for joining us, everybody, on behalf of our whole crew. Alongside Jim Leisure, I'm Jonathan Mathis saying thank you. And so long from Newcastle Fieldhouse. You've been watching Nine Star Sports. Newcastle, 48. New Pal, 37.